Hello and welcome to the Sunday Night Football Player Prop video. I'm your host, Matthew Motto. Joined here by Patrick Monin and Jacob Wayne. We got the Titans and Chiefs. Obviously, we don't know who the quarterback is at the time of recording this. Therefore, we don't have many pass-catching props for the Tennessee Titans side of the ball. Or, you know, Malik Willis slash Tannehill props. But, Jacob, without further ado, what is your favorite from what we have listed here? If we don't have it listed... We'll comment in down below. Yeah, so I would say my favorite on the board is going to be Travis Kelsey, over six and a half receptions. He had exactly seven in each of his last two games against Tennessee with Patrick Mahomes, but those are with Tyreek Hill. So now he's getting even more of a target share. Um, Titans ranked 22nd in pass defense DVOA against tight ends, allowing 7.2 catches and 58 yards to the position per game. And I think you're going to see them run a lot of two high uh, safeties in this game which should allow Travis Kelsey to work in the intermediate uh, middle area of the field. Um, I think he's going to see a ton of targets and surpass his prop this week. Patrick? Yeah, at first glance, I, I thought it seemed a bit high, but I do like Juju Smith-Schuster over 54.5 receiving yards in this game. Looks like the Titans are going to line up with Fulton on the outside against MVS. Juju will likely line up against McCreary, the rookie out of Auburn. I, I like McCreary, but he has struggled against tall receivers who are good at the break point, and Juju's good in both of those areas. And I also think because Casey will struggle to run the ball here at times, and, and Mahomes will be under pressure for parts of this game, Juju will be an attractive option on those underneath routes. So I like Juju over 54 and a half receiving yards. I, I also think he can break it down field pretty good. So his receptions are four and a half right now, I believe. I, I might pass on that for now, but I do like the Irish one. My only question with that is the Chiefs have been running uh, Nicole Harbin out of the slot quite a bit as well. Um, and then they are getting Kadarius Tony for this game. So it'll be interesting to see where their usage goes. I mean, I, I think Juju will still be on the field quite a bit, but just interesting to see like if he's going to be lining up out wide more. But I definitely think whoever's being guarded by McCreary can have success in this game. Um, McCreary uh, was supposed to be a first-round corner, uh, Slipped to the second round primarily because of his lack of length and how he tested the combine. Um, so I think if you're getting Juju on him, I definitely agree that he can have success there. I'm going to go with something Patrick said where I don't think the Chiefs will be able to run the football. I think they're going to pass quite a bit in this game. So I'm just going to take Patrick Mahomes over 277 and a half passing yards. A little high. But in the games he has not hit this, it's been against Tampa, Indianapolis, and the Chargers. So in the Chargers game, pretty self-explanatory. You can run all over the Chargers. You don't need to pass. And then the Colts and the Tampa Bay game. Very weird game scripts. Like, they're up huge in the Tampa Bay game from running the football. The Colts game, I don't know. I guess I don't really have an excuse for that one. I think it was just a bad game from Mahomes. 20 for 35, only 262 yards, touchdown to pick. Um... But I have a lot of faith in this game. The game script's going to be favorable. I think they're going to pass a ton. I, I'm hoping that Derrick Henry is able to get some things going on the ground and put up points so the Chiefs have to keep passing, I guess. But even if they don't, I'm happy with this number. I think it's just low enough for... I mean, Patrick, how many attempts would you think Mahomes would have in the game like this where they shouldn't be able to run the football? At times, yeah, I mean, I think you could see 30-plus easy in this game. And I, I will give you an excuse for that Colts game. I thought there was an unreasonable number of drops there we go. by Travis Kelsey in that game on, on large, long yardage plays that would have easily taken well, them over thank that thank you, number. Patrick, for coming to my aid there. All right, so I got the Mahomes prop. Jacob, back over to you. Yeah, just to work in your favor there, he has gone over that number in two of his three career games against the Titans. Uh, the one that he didn't was last year. On that primetime game when he got hurt in that game, if you remember, and Chad Henney played a solid chunk of that one, so, you know, possibly could have gone over if he hadn't gotten hurt. But I am going to be on the Patrick Mahomes' longest completion under in this game. I think the Titans are going to play a lot of that too high shell and really force them to drive methodically down the field, uh, put some pressure on Mahomes as well with Jeffrey Simmons, Danico Autry, especially in the interior. My biggest concern with this one is going to be yards after the catch. Uh, the Titans do rank 26th in tackling on PFF, but to me, we, we talked about this on the betting picks video a little bit, but I do have faith in Mike Rabel to iron that out as the season goes on and have his, his defense ready to play the right scheme against the Chiefs. I mean, I think he's one of the better defensive coaches in the league. So to me, Mahomes isn't going to have a long bomb 
catch in this game. I've been targeting a lot of these longest completion under in these primetime games, and I'll do it again here. Back to you, Patrick. Yeah, I also like Patrick Mahomes under 19.5 rushing yards here. We talked about this in the betting pick video as well and a little bit here, but this is a pretty quick-hitting Tennessee defense that does a good job of containing the edges to the outside. I also like Long and Cunningham, both of their, their linebackers listed right now as two, two incredibly disciplined guys when it comes to, to keeping their contain. They can act as spies if the pocket does break down, and the numbers do bear this out where we know the Bills truck this Tennessee team, but Josh Allen only ran for 10 yards in that game, and Daniel Jones, he went for 25 yards on, on six attempts, and some of those were design runs. The Chiefs rarely do design runs, and this is just a high number for, for a team in this spot that doesn't really game plan for this. Like, you're pretty much counting on the pocket breaking down multiple times, and Mahomes having success there, which which is the bet, but I, I like the Titans in that spot. So Mahomes under 19.5 rushing yards. No, I, I think that's it. It's the only concern there is this isn't – like a Josh Allen number where it's at like 45 and you know he has to, to run a lot. I hate that it's at 19 and a half because I just, I'm worried that one long Mahomes rush is going to hit it. But I, I, I agree with the logic there, Patrick. Um, For myself, I'm really debating on this one. It's it's tough. I want to go Miko Hardman over 15 and a half longest reception. Like Jacob said, they've been using him out of the slot a little bit more. They've been using a lot more design plays towards him. My only concern is they just traded for Kadarius Toney, um, which I'm sure is going to eat into some of Miko Hardman's play selection. But, you know, his usage has has gone up quite a bit, especially in that San Francisco game, and he played well. So I don't think they trade for Kadarius Toney in mind that, like, oh, Hardman's playing bad. I think Andy Reid just saw an opportunity to buy low on a good weapon, and he did. So I think his usage is going to stay maybe a little bit less than we saw in the game against San Francisco, but high enough. He's hit this in four of his seven games. And in two of the games they didn't hit, the Tampa Bay and Colts game, he really wasn't used. He also wasn't on the field a lot. But then he started getting back on the field against Buffalo, and then again, 63% snap percentage against the 49ers. I think as long as he gets three to four targets, which he's been getting most weeks, this is a pretty easy prop for him to hit. And when he does get to that target number, he does hit this prop. So, I like it. Jacob, got any more? Just a general question for you guys from a handicapping standpoint. How much do you expect Kadarius Tony to play in this game, to be involved in the passing game, to get targeted? Like, that's where I was having an issue with some of these props. Is It's just hard to know what his involvement will be. I think it's going to be rather low. Like... Maybe I'm misremembering, but I felt like he had a little bit of trouble picking up the playbook for the Giants. And you're coming into an Andy Reid offense, and you have to pick it up midweek. He's also been injured for quite a bit. He, they said he's looking really good on the field, but it's like, I don't think you're going to put him in there for a lot of, yeah, true. A ton of snaps the first game. I, I'm i thinking like 15 to 30 snaps would be, be his absolute max, but I highly yeah. doubt we see that. I think it's going to be like 10 snaps in this game. Yeah. I, I, I could see it being a low number, but I wouldn't be shocked if they yeah. use him in like a specific red zone package or something like that. Yeah, I, I agree. I think if they use him, it'll be for a specialized purpose. And I, yeah, I think you're going to see less action like CMC, for example, got in his first start with the Niners. Um, just because he's also not really filling right. a need as much as he's complementing a lot of what they already have. So like they don't need to use him. It doesn't benefit him as much to force things here. So, I feel like if they do, it'll just be like... Honestly, all like, season, I don't think he's going to get a ton of snaps unless he starts really showing out. I think he's going to be kind of like a gadget piece the whole season. The more I kind of think about it. So, coming into your first week, you're like, and you're already just kind of a gadget piece, I don't think there's going to be a ton of usage. Yeah. But we'll see. I can see that. Um, you know, like Matt said, not any Titans props out at the moment, but... When they drop, I think I might be interested in Derrick Henry's attempts prop just from a, a game script standpoint. What the Titans are going to try to accomplish in this game is run the ball consistently. Um, particular, I mean, either way, if Tannehill, if Tannehill starts and he's not 100% or if Malik Willis starts, then definitely we'll see a heavy dose of Derrick Henry. But I think whatever his attempts prop is, I could see him getting 25 carries in this game. Yeah. Patrick? Nope, no other official plays for me. I 
I'm always attracted by the under on passing touchdowns. It's two and a half right now, significantly juiced up, and I kind of got burned on that last week, which we'll get into on the report card. So staying away from that for now. Those are my only two official I plays. I think I will be on <clears throat> Malik Willis unders for passing yards. I may even be on Tannehill's unders for passing yards if they come out. I just don't feel like either of these quarterbacks have been playing phenomenally great. I think Kansas City's defense, especially their pass rush, has been more impressive than I originally thought. I mean, they're getting pressure at the 10th highest rate. They are blitzing at the 8th highest rate, so it is manufactured pressure, but it's still there. Um, they're 26th in pass DVOA, but 19th according to PFF, and it's not like this Tennessee passing offense has been great. It's also 19th in DVOA, 22nd by PFF. Generally speaking, though, I just, like Jacob said, the game script's going to be feed the ball to Derrick Henry. So it might even be kind of like, these are correlated, so I don't know what kind of same game parlay odds you're going to get, but under on Derrick Henry rush, or uh, over on his attempts, and then under on the passing yards for Malik Wills or Tannehill could be a fun parlay. Just bang on the game script there. All right. So to wrap things up, we have Jacob on the Kelsey over for receptions. At 6.5 at minus 105, Juju Smith-Schuster over 54.5 receiving yards at minus 115 for Patrick. I have over 277.5 passing yards from Patrick Mahomes at minus 115. We have under 38.5 longest passing completion for Jacob at minus 120. That's the player's Patrick Mahomes. Jacob is the better. Under 19.5 rushing yards for Patrick Mahomes at minus 115. That is a bet by Patrick. And then Mikol Hardman over 15 and a half longest reception at minus 115 for myself. Jacob talked about the Derrick Henry attempts prop, which I am on board with as well. I talked about Tannehill Malik Willis under maybe attempts, maybe yards. We'll just have to see where the line is. We'll comment down that down below. If you want to stay tuned for the betting report card, it'll be after the outro. Thank you for watching. As always, if you like this video, drop a like. Did not a dislike. Comment down below your favorite bets. Hit the subscribe button to see more content like this. Check out the betting picks video where we go over spread, money line, and other team bets this one's just focused on the players and uh, let's check out that report card so not a terrible night four and three plus a half unit patrick you won the aaron jones over on attempts was that your only bet for this one yeah way to go <laughs> yeah yeah i didn't have a huge huge read on many of these but Shout out to Jacob, too, because I originally had the yards at DraftKings, didn't have the attempts when we initially recorded this, but he did bring it up, and that ended up being the prop. So, yeah, that was that was nice. Huge Aaron Jones game, well, with the Packers were able to get going on the ground, and really not much hey, more. Hey, we're talking about this Packers out of this Monday night. It's Sunday night. This is oh. Sunday night's game, right? I'm, I'm bugging. I'm sorry. <laughs> You're right. My bad. <laughs> So, Jacob, you had one bet, Aaron Jones, over receiving yards. I think that was it. Didn't it end up hitting, according to what I have here? Wait, I have you. Oh, yeah, no, yeah, yeah, you yeah, had I had the single tight rushing more. yards. Um, the Jones prop had his receptions over four and a half of plus money, I believe. I would do that. I would take that again happily. He finished with four and easily could have been five. Um, wish I played his rushing yards as well. Um, but yeah, I think he played really well in that game, but Devin Singletary definitely, uh, surpassed that pretty early too. And then I went two and two, lost the Josh, Josh Allen passing yards, lost the other on rushing yards, even though I, I would go back and take that bet again. It's just, it was a good value, I think, for what the Packers do well and, uh, how the game was going to go, but got the digs over receiving yards and I got the Aaron Jones over on attempts, so... I don't think I have much analysis here. Would we'll take the out and under rushing yards again. The overpassing yards, kind of a coin flip. I don't know if it was a great bet. I ended up losing, so lost units there. But the over attempts was smashed. The Stefan Diggs over was not really in doubt, so felt pretty good on the week. It's going to wrap things up. Thank you guys for watching. We'll see you for the next one very soon.